Yo, what is going on everyone and welcome to my first Division 2 guide. And this one, we're going to be going into the Dark Zone. I'm going to be giving you guys some tips and tricks on how you can come out with the most loot. And also how you can use the Dark Zone to come out with a ton of purple and gold gear. So we're going to be going over a few tips and tricks as well as a farming method where you can actually go in and get a ton of chests again and again without even really having to go through a bunch of the landmarks or anything that has to do with the Dark Zone. So we're going to jump right on into the Dark Zone. This is going to be more of like a startup beginner's guide. So we're going to be going into the first Dark Zone that you will be able to unlock. Now, as you go through the story mode, you're going to have to go into a recon mission. And once you've completed that recon mission, you'll be able to go into the Dark Zone whenever you want and also unlock all of these fast travel points that come with it as well. So to start off the farming method, we're going to head over to Dark Zone East. This is the fast travel location that best suits going over some landmarks as well as the chest route that we're going to be going after. So once you've made your way into the dark zone, if there aren't any landmarks here, you can head straight for the chest. However, if you find some landmarks in your way, it's best just to go and clear out the squads and loot those landmarks before going to the chest. Now completing these little milestones on the way will actually increase your dark zone level. So when you go and actually open the chest, your loot chances will be higher. Now I highly suggest not even going into the dark zone to farm and go for gear until you've actually reached like level 15 or so. If you go in before that level, you're going to come out with a lot of blue gear and a lot of gear that's not really going to help you in the end game. So by going in after level 15 and really starting to farm then, you're actually going to be getting purple and gold gear that you can take all the way to end game and use later on as well. So if we take a look at our map, this is the exact location we're going to be starting our farming route in. So if we go through that fence and make our way into this building, there's a chance to find the first chest location, which is located right around this wall, tucked away in the corner. Now, as you guys can see, I'm going to loot this chest and actually gain my first loot from the dark zone. So just head over to the chest and be sure to pick the lock once you get here. Now, by picking the lock, you're actually going to go rogue. And as you increase your rogue level, the higher and higher that your rogue level gets, the better the gear it will be as you open up these chests. So if you open up that chest, if it spawns in there, you actually want to follow this route. We can come around the corner. And as you run around, after you've gone rogue, you'll see that there's more chances to go rogue that have popped up on my minimap. So as you, if you look ahead, you'll see that there's a rogue skull in front of me. And what you want to do is actually go up to all of these different skulls while you're looting the chest. Now, as you go up to these skulls, you're going to find things like terminals to hack or other things to disrupt. And each and every time that you loot one of these skulls, your rogue level is going to go up and you're going to get an increased amount of drops from these chests. So as you can see, I've already pulled out two purples in a matter of about one minute of following this route. So after that chest, you're going to want to head in this direction here. We're going to be able to find another chest that's located around the corner. Now, huge shout out to my friend Gamer Guy who actually showed me this route. Now, there's a few other routes that we know of as well. And on top of that, we actually have a complete farming method so that you guys are able to do this with your friends nonstop and level up and get tons and tons of gear. So as you can see there, I found another terminal hack which increased my rogue level. Now, keep in mind, the faster you get your rogue level up, the better, because once it hits 600, it's actually going to cap out and you're going to be at the maximum rogue status that you're able to have. Now also once you hit 600 rogue, you're going to be able to have access to a secret safe house and that way you can actually go there and get rid of your rogue level before leaving the dark zone or before extracting all together. Now if you've been following this route just around the corner, we're actually going to be able to pick up another chest which is located just here. So once we pick that lock, we're actually going to have three sets of loot now because we've already gotten three chests and on top of that we've already gotten our rogue level up as well. So if we continue along this route, we're going to be able to get a few more chests as well. Just remember to make some pit stops and get your rogue level up as you see fit. We're going to see all those little options pop up on your minimap. So here and there, you're going to want to make sure to actually go out of your way, hack some of those terminals and go to those skulls until you get to the 600 cap. So you're going to come to this courtyard here and you're going to see this little tiny bridge that we're crossing now. Now, as you cross this bridge, you want to actually go around this area. There's going to be a little pipe which you can go underground and there's another chest located there that you can loot. Now, if you see a terminal of the hack or other ways to earn rogue before going down to this chest, it's in your best interest to go and hit the terminal first, then come down here to get the chest. So this is going to be the fourth chest, I believe, that we're looting. So we're going to take a quick look at the loot here inside. It's actually going to be my third set of purple gear. Now, keep in mind, my overall level is level 15 and my dark zone level is level 7 right now. So loot is going to be determined on your overall level before coming in here. Also, it's going to be determined based off your dark zone level. So the higher your dark zone level is, the better chance at gold and purple loot you're going to have. 
So as we go around, we're gonna actually hit our 600 rogue cap. So if we after we hack this SHD network, you're gonna see my rogue level has actually hit 600 and my numbers have completely gone away. Now at this point, you're gonna see a message saying that the thieves den is available. So the thieves den is a little safe house that you can go to to clear your rogue status and then actually go back to looting even more. So here's a quick look at what that safe house will look like once you make it to it. As you can see, I've gone inside, my rogue level has been cleared. Now once your rogue level is cleared, you can actually head right back out after doing that chest farm method and you can go and start to clear out some more landmarks as well. This is the method that I use and as you guys can see, I was actually able to pick up my first gold after clearing out that landmark. A lot of gold components and resources have been dropped from killing the gold enemies. So it's very worth it to actually go up and clear out some of these hideouts while doing the chests as well. Now keep in mind also at some point in time after collecting all of this loot you will need to go to an extraction point and put your loot on the chopper so that it does come outside of the dark zone with you once you finally leave. Now as soon as you put your loot on the chopper you can actually go and immediately start to get more chests. So we're going to head right on over to another chest location. Now keep in mind if you leave your loot behind there's a chance that other people can come up and steal it from you but if no one's in your surrounding area you really don't need to worry about it and you can just go right to farming right away because you don't want to waste any time. So if we head over in this direction, we're actually going to be able to loot another chest, which is located just around the corner. So coming into this room, there's a chance of actually getting two chest spawns. So if you're lucky enough, you can actually come right in here after depositing your loot to the chopper and get two more chests right off the bat to start your rogue level back up again. So after you put your stuff in the chopper, it's really easy just to come into this room right here, hit the chest that's located right here. And then there's actually another chest located just around the corner as well. So you're going to be killing all these enemies and we're actually going to be looting the chests as well. Now keep in mind, if you do have any keys, you're going to earn keys randomly in the dark zone from defeating enemies. And if you use these keys on the boxes, you're actually not going to receive a rogue level at all. Now as you guys can see, the extraction that I just started about 30 seconds ago has completed and we're already on our way and we've looted two more chests in that amount of time. So that's why it's actually smarter just to go out and get more loot instead of waiting for your loot to finish up. Now if you have something of really high value, maybe you've gotten a gold weapon or something very special, you may want to wait for the chopper to finish up so that nobody else steals it. But if you just have some common stuff or stuff that you know you're going to scrap down later, just leave it on the chopper and go right to these next chests. After doing that, collecting these two chests, you can actually clear out this room and it's going to count as a landmark as well if it's spawned in. So that's actually three rewards that we've gotten all in a total of about only one minute. So by combining the chest farms as well as clearing out these landmarks and points of interest in the dark zone, you can come out with tons and tons of loot much faster. And as you can see, I'm actually leveling up my dark zone level as we do this as well. So after clearing out this landmark, I'm actually gonna receive another gold item. So we've looted three chests. We've actually gotten a gold item and a weapon from this man as well after completing this landmark. Now, because we're so close to the chopper, we can drop this stuff off right at the chopper. And all you really need to do is just rinse and repeat this method. So you can go right back to the very same chest as before. So basically, once you've cleared out a good portion of the dark zone, and if you want to start all over again and go right back in, not have to wait for anything to restart or anything, you want to just continue to farm and pile up all the loot in your stash. So let's say you've gone through a good majority of your dark zone and you want to find a new lobby so that you guys can continue to farm with your team. All you actually will need to do in order to do this is just find a new server and reset all of the chests. So make sure you hit 600 rogue and then head straight to the safe house Make sure you've extracted all your loot and stuff like that before you do this so that you guys don't miss out on any of the stuff that you've already collected. Now once you've extracted everything, you can head straight to the safe house and begin to do this. So if you're doing this solo and you don't have a team with you, it's pretty simple in order to find a new server. All you'll actually need to do is just go to your friends list, find your nearest friend that is, that is playing the Division 2, and then just join their group. Now after you join their group, you just go ahead and leave your group, go back to a solo session, and head right back into the dark zone, and all of the chests will be there. Now if you're with a team, you guys all pretty much have to do the same thing. You guys all have to go into a different friend's lobby so that you can go onto their server, and then once you join back onto your original server, you'll be able to go back to the dark zone. So if this all sounds too complicated, or maybe you don't have any more friends that are playing the division, you can just restart your application and go back to the dark zone that way, and th that will also restart the chests. However, it's going to take a little bit longer. So if you want to stay in the game and just keep farming and farming, that's actually the best way to do it is by leaving your lobby and then starting up a new lobby with some friends so that you can reset all of your chests. Now I'm going to go back to the White House and show you guys my stash and everything that I've looted from the Dark Zone in only the past 35 minutes. So I'm going to show you guys everything that I got in only 35 minutes time. 
so you guys know exactly what I got and what you'll be looking at getting if you follow this method. So we just finished up the Dark Zone run and we're going to head back into the White House now. We're going to head to my stash and show you guys everything that was sent there from the choppers in the Dark Zone. So if you're wondering where all your loot went, just go to your stash and actually head over to your deliveries. Everything that goes into the chopper is going to end up going into here for you to inspect later. So the best item I ended up getting in that run was actually that gold holster. And as you can see, I ended up coming out with a ton of purple gear as well and these blue weapons. So that's everything that I got from the Dark Zone run in only 35 minutes time. And following this method and rinse and repeating it, you can do this again and again as many times as you like. Now keep in mind, this is only my beginner's guide and it's also only the loot chest run for that northeastern region. I'm going to be making guides for all of the different regions in the Dark Zone and different chest runs that you guys can do in those regions as well. So this method will work in all the other Dark Zones, it's just that they look a little different and that the chest spawns are going to be different as well. So if you liked this guide, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned to the channel as I will be making future Dark Zone run guides and Division 2 guides as time goes on. So I hope you guys did enjoy and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.